All right. We are going to go live, folks. We'll give you a little time to gather your thoughts, get ready to go. Oh, and by the way, okay. By the way, we are here in beautiful downtown Orlando, as you can see behind me. Great view. I'm going to picturesque. It's a Chamber of Commerce day here in Central Florida. Uh, a little chilly, but it's going to warm up a little bit. But anyway, I uh, want to thank everybody for joining me. I am Lee Seiler, also known as the Stock Doctor. And there is really a lot going on. I mean, what I thought is really comedic, actually. The Iowa Caucus. Now, I consider myself to be somewhat intelligent and still don't know what a caucus is. Okay, that did sound kind of inappropriate, but you know what I meant. Uh, and, and after learning about it and, and listening and watching, it's still very confusing. But anyway, uh, we'll see what happens. We still don't have a winner here in this Iowa caucus, which is supposedly, and I find it really amusing in, in politics how Iowa is so important, which is, I mean, Iowa is a pimple on the base of the U.S. economy, but it's still, I'm not knocking the great state of Iowa, I guess, but uh, it can kind of direct the momentum of the candidates. We'll see. I don't know. I couldn't care less. That's right, folks. Couldn't care less. Not could care less, please. Okay. I'm Lee Siler again. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, I know what everybody wants to talk about. Tesla. All right. Tesla. I have not in my career, and I, you know, I've seen some some moonshot stocks, but this is just unbelievable what I'm seeing with Tesla. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to pull a chart on the stock because it is just unbelievable. I haven't seen anything like it. And you know, here's the problem with Tesla. And if I could see my keyboard, that'd be great. Okay, the problem with Tesla is that I'm not sure I can believe any of the data. All right, their numbers were good, everything looked fine, but the valuation on this stock, I mean, this is just a lunar shot, and I'm trying to look back here. At this point, the stock was, wow, that was, um, November was $300 a share. It's indicating up over 800 this morning. I mean, this is a parabolic move, and if you're in the stock, more power to you, but I have a really sneaky suspicion, and I'm sure I'm not alone with this, that this could be one of the greatest short squeezes in the history of short squeezes. What that means is, folks, just like gambling in Vegas, there are different ways to play stocks. You can go long, which means you want to own them. You love the company, you want to be owner, have ownership in it, you want it to go up in value to make money, or you can be negative on a company and you want to short it, meaning you, you sell the stock without owning it in hopes to buy it back at a lower price. So for example, you short a stock at $100, the stock goes down to 80, you buy it back, you capture that $20 in profit. A lot of things, there's some a lot of moving parts to that, but in essence, that's pretty much how it works. But what happens is, when you short a stock, it guarantees that you a buy down the road because you have to buy it back at some point, whether you sell it 100 and buy it back at 50 cents, you have to buy it back at some point. So it ensures buying. And what happens is when you're short the stock and all of a sudden it's starting to rally and you go, oh, wow, I, I'm getting my tail kicked because I shorted it at 100 because here's the one thing. If you buy a stock at 100, your downside risk is 100%. 100 bucks, all right, go to zero. When you short a stock, your downside is infinity. So if you stored a stock at 100, let's say you shorted Tesla at 100. Guess what? It's 800 bucks today. So you've lost your money and then some, which because you have to do this on margin. And that's what makes it more complicated. So you're borrowing money to do it as well. So it's a real high risk proposition. And a lot of guys do it. We've done it. I don't do it on a day to day basis for clients or even a week to week or month to month basis. It has to be a, a sophisticated client that understands the concept of enormous risk. Okay, that being said, what happens is when the shorts get a little nervous and they're taking it in the shorts, they start panic buying back and that just runs the stock up. And I feel that's what we're seeing here is really a, a, just a paramount short squeeze on the stock. Uh, look, I don't own it, didn't own it. So I missed it 
And I just am not a believer. And I know my buddy Ryan out there has not been a believer either. And I know he's been railing on the stock. And uh, Ryan, I don't know, man. It just, uh, it's one of these things where it, I've never seen anything like it. And uh, I think you were always saying that you can't believe the numbers. And uh, again, the numbers are unbelievable. I just find it hard to believe that a company that makes very small, in, in the greater grand scheme of things, makes, unless they're making a flying car, like the Jetsons, which by the way, I was at a conference last week and there's technology trying to make flying cars. Are you kidding me? I, I just don't get it. I mean, look, I believed it back in the day and I used to watch the Jetsons, I loved it. Right? By the way, the greatest theme music in history, you know, the Meet George Jetson. Anyway, sorry, I need coffee. I just couldn't get my IV coffee this morning. So I wouldn't touch Tesla here, guys. It's gonna crater at some point, all right? It's, it's doomed to, it's gonna take a hit of hundreds of points. So. I mean, if you buy it, please. And, and you know, here's a problem. I could say buy it and put a stop in it so protect yourself. But if it gaps down one morning, 300 bucks or 200 bucks, you're unprotected. So uh, I would just at this point avoid it. And again, I have not been a buyer of the stock anyway. And again, I like to buy things that you can feel, touch, see. And yes, Tesla's look to be great cars. I test drove one time. And uh, I like the car. I just don't like something that you have to recharge every 300 miles. So it's just not for me. So uh, let's talk about the rest of the markets because the rest of the markets have been acting not great. And, and why is that? Well, it's because a lot of it, as I look for what's going on in the market here. Hold on, bear with me. I will get that chart up for you. Uh, the coronavirus. Typically these things, you know, we had SARS and, and these events are really short lived typically. Now, and they try to get you, when I say they, the media tries to get you to believe it's worse than it is. And maybe it is this time. And it's funny because every time somebody says it's different this time, it's never different this time. But that's why I don't believe it. A couple of things. Yes, the market has been on a nice little rally prior to this coronavirus scare. Uh, however, the breadth of the market has not been good, meaning there are a lot more stocks going down than going up. And the quality of the rally has not been great. I mean, if you look at the Dow Jones, which is 30 stocks, and I just look at that because it's just easier to pinpoint. I mean, if it weren't for Microsoft, and if it weren't for Apple, which are Dow components, the Dow would be a fraction of, of where it is right now. So, you know, there's been very limited stocks taking the markets higher. That's not broad-based rally mode. That's not a, a great breath, as you want to see in the market. Now. The good news is the market did pull back right to where it's supposed to. This is the S&P 500. You can see, I'll, I'll re-educate you a little bit. The white line is a 200-day moving average. That's a long-term support line, which it tends to hit here periodically. I'll give you some uh, timeline where my cursor is. It's October of uh, last year. And that's where it hit the 200-day moving average. It's rallied way above the 200-day. But now the red line is a 50-day moving average, which is typically your next line of support. And support is where the markets feel that, hey, maybe it's gone down enough and we can feel comfortable investing in it again. So my thought is, A, I do believe there's something else going on besides corona. I think that the markets are telling us that Either earnings are slowing, there's something going on, the election, of course, you know, the election was a cluster you-know-what last night just to start it off, and and um, so we don't know who won that. It's going to be a challenge because, look, let's face it, I don't, I don't care who you vote for, I really don't care, but the market does not want to see Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren. That's just fact of life. So if you're a Bernie Sanders fan, Elizabeth Warren fan, I'm not ragging you. Again, I couldn't care less, but the market doesn't like it. I think the market would probably be okay with a Joe Biden win, and Buttigieg, I don't think anybody really knows enough about him uh, and his policy. I mean, he was the mayor of a, of a small city, so we'll see. But uh, I don't think they're that scared of him. So we'll see what happens politically. I am concerned going forward here. I think that the coronavirus thing, if it looks like it's contained, the market could continue its upward trend. However, we gotta be prepared for some violent swings of the downside. Again, I think that there's something else going on underneath the rates on the 10-year treasury. Interest rates have dropped. That gives you concern there. Look, when basically the second largest economy in the world has for, for all intents and purposes has shut down, uh, that's a problem for world growth. So we'll see what happens. 
I wouldn't take any big bets right now. I'm looking to buy stocks that maybe haven't gone down so much during this turmoil or uh, you know, have even gone up, although Tesla's pretty much the only one that's gone up and I'm not gonna buy that one now. But other than that, I, I do think that the financials have pulled back with rates going down. That may be opportunity. You have some broken charts there, however. Uh, let's take a look at a couple things. Now, one of the best ones, well, this is Citigroup. Citigroup's made a pretty good rally. I'll show you right here. Citigroup rallied nicely towards the end of the year and then had pulled back a little bit, but that's not bad because what you see here in Citigroup, it was $60 a share, rallied to 82. That's a pretty good move. That's a 30% move from here to here. And it's gotta give some of that back. Stocks don't go straight up. So when you have a 60 to 80 move, that's uh, 20 points. And it's given back now about eight, nine points. That's not a bad thing. Can easily pull back a third of its move. The, the really the best financial in the group is JP Morgan. And JP Morgan hasn't pulled back as badly Okay, so you got to pick and choose your spots. Uh, I mean, when you look at some of the other ones, here's clearly the loser of the group, Wells Fargo. Look at how different that is. So I showed you three different stocks in the financial sector, two acting normal, but Wells, there's clearly something wrong here. And the stock is telling you. I know that you've been taught buy low, sell high, and, and I, I somewhat agree with that. But I like to say, you know, buy and sell higher because oftentimes when a stock is down here at this level, it's down here, I'm sorry, down here at this level, it's down here for a reason. There's a major gap down on earnings. The stock is acting really, 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 really poorly. So would not be a buyer of Wells, but I do like JP Morgan, even City. So um, anyway, there's some other sectors out there I do like. I like the disruptive type sectors. Uh, Cloud-based, Google came out with numbers yesterday. Their earnings were, were great. Revenues were down a little bit. Their cloud business is good. Apple numbers were fantastic last week. The stock rallied on earnings down a little bit, but Apple is going to gap up this morning. I'll show you a quick chart on Apple stock. I want to disclose we do own. I've owned it for years and have significant profits in it. Here we go. The big rally, almost like a, not a quite Tesla type move, but a, a hell of a parabolic move. And we just had a little bit of congestion up here. So let's pull them back slightly. Hit uh, 326, I think, was that high point right there, 327.85, and pulled back a little bit. But what's interesting, let me show you how it's trading now. It closed yesterday at 308, and I'm going to show you where it's trading pre market right now, so you'll get an idea. Here's some trades going on. This is how the market's trading now, 315 pre market, so I can actually see the trading going on. So, anyway. Uh, all in all, again, I'm a little cautious, but I, I've been cautious, but I, I'm letting my stocks ride. I've, I took some profits. I did sell my Bank of America position a few weeks ago. I sold a couple other things only because I thought it was time. But uh, anyway, other than that, uh, keep in mind, we have some seminars coming up. We have some great events. If you want to sit down with a consultation, give us a call at the office. Let's, let's look at your 401k. Great time to reallocate. I think you maybe you want to take just a, a little bit less um, of an aggressive posture at times, and this may be one of the times. Call us 407-831-8002, 407-831-8002. You can email me, stockdr at stockdr.com. I appreciate you joining me. Share, share, share the video. This is good educational stuff. We got a lot of big things happening here at Siler Wealth Management and at stockdr.com. So everybody have a fantastic day. Talk to you soon.